Hello, people of the internet. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, happy Thursday to you all. Let's get into this properly. We have Yong Jong Hua of CM Blue and his Your City EP to check out. So, refresh off of the title track of the same name. It was very enjoyable. It was such a good time. I very much enjoyed it. I've enjoyed pretty much, well, essentially, we're two for two on Jung Yong Hua content that we checked out. Episode 80 of Yungjin Service, checked out yesterday or two days ago, I can't remember at this point, and then the title track. So let's see what the album is going to be about. This is the album listen. Uh, if you're new around here, we just kind of run through the album song by song. The timeline below is going to be chapter based on whatever song we're listening to. And usually I read off of album credits and things like that, but um, I don't really have the luxury of doing that, considering um, I have one screen to deal with. I can't really pull it up uh, in between, like, uh, recording takes and things like that is it really makes editing a pain in the butt ski and uh, my phone is being used as the microphone at the moment so uh, we'll work with what we've got I'll take a gander through songwriting credits and things like that after the recording so I can understand the nature of the project and things like that but in the meantime uh, let's see what actually song what songs do we have so we have pain healer on Your Time, Small Talk, Season of Love, and Note to Self to finish off. Sounds like a plan to me. So, let's get into it. DJ, roll an intro. Okay, track number two, Pain Healer. No lyric videos or things of that nature. We're just gonna have the album art up and we're just going to enjoy the vibes. So here we go, Pain Healer. Whoa. Talk about a contrast to start off. That's intense. Okay, I'm on board. Yeah, this like combating two sides and the song is really cool. And you hear the extra power he put in the vocals there at the end. Yeah, it's like they're really smooth and they're really intense, they're like clashing with each other. That's so cool, you just get the punches of the electric guitar coming in. Nice note choice there. Nice. Wow. Okay. We are starting off with a banger. 
with a proper banger. Um, you know the feeling I'm getting from this? It's that bittersweet anthem in a way. And it ultimately comes down to those two clashing styles, and I think that's so cool. It's, it's so calling a self-aware is the wrong word for it, but this song very much knows what it's supposed to be, this intense song, and what it's supposed to be, this like kind of more graceful, gentle song. But the fact that it's not a very clear cut, like, say, you know, the verses are going to be really pretty, the pre-chorus is going to be the transition, and the chorus is going to be hard-hitting. No, no, no. That aggressiveness this actually punches into the song. It, it almost interrupts the song in a way, and I think that is such a cool creative direction. Oh. And then just overall, like, even his vocals go along with that, too. So even... No, his vocals are like really smooth and really pretty in the verses, and all of a sudden the guitar punches in. It's like, wait, the music. It's like the music is trying to overwhelm the vocals, stylistically, not in actuality, but stylistically. It's like trying to butt itself into the song, and then once that chorus comes in, and you feel that grit, and you feel Jong Wa's or Young Wa's power. Sorry. Like kind of cut through. It's like okay, yep. There's that intensity. And then it goes back into the verse, and it's all nice and pretty. And then you get the guitars punching in. It's like, wow. That's very cool. That's a very cool B-side. We'll keep her moving, though. On your time. enjoying that way too much. <laughs> nice bass run for the re-entry. Maybe like a muted trumpet or something. Oh, because they tease us a little bit with the brass instruments in the intro and the outro. But 
Oh, yo, that was so nice. Oh, your time was so nice. Like, you saw immediately me sort of like sway along with the beat. That's the kind of song. This is the kind of song that I'm looking for. This is a, such a relaxing and calming song that's not in like ballad form. You know, it's very casual. You don't really need to try too hard to listen to it. You just kind of let the song take you. And it's very easy listen. Oh. Yeah. It, it does, like, I think once I clocked onto the fact of those synths in the chorus, I think that's when the city pop vibe came in from. But just overall, I have absolutely nothing bad to say about this. In fact, I don't really have a lot to say about this song, other than that it's just, it's so vibey and I can listen to it again. And honestly, B-sides, two for two. Two for two, two for two. Not, not a lot needs to be said about On Your Time, it's just a very good song. Small talk. Synth driven song, okay. Y'all know how I feel about synth pop. I reckon this might be a little bit different though. Takedown for the pre chord is really nice. I forgot to talk, I'm so sorry. It's not a synth poppy. As I was initially expecting from the opening. But the beat is just so nice and consistent. The beat just drives forward so nicely that I kind of got lost in it. I'm sorry. I feel like I've heard of a J-Rock group that has done a song similar to this, and I can't put my finger on what who. feels more punchier, but I like that bridge. Wow. That, that is the textbook definition of getting lost in the sauce right there. Um, Man. Here's the thing. When it comes to that retro synth sound, I'm gonna love it. There's just something about the sound and the texture of that retro synth sound that just does things for me. It just works for me. It doesn't really matter what it is. Like, it can be slower city pop. It can be, like, really high-intensity, like, cyberpunk-esque music. It can be, you know, like, your um, Top Gun... Danger Zone type synth pop beat. I'm gonna like it. Well, immediately I knew I was gonna like Small Talk, and that's 
that assumption was correct. I very much enjoyed Small Talk. Hey, I genuinely don't know how I'm going to pick B-side of the album, because so far this album is 3 for 3 on B-sides. And it's like, I couldn't disting- uh, uh, differentiate between the three. It's interesting how um, your perception of certain instrumental parts changes depending on what's around it. And it comes down to like uh, how exposed is that instrumental part. Because I made the comment about the kick and the snare feeling a lot punchier in that bridge. And it's down to the reason that it's never been that exposed before. And I think that's really interesting because that punchy pad launch pad beat is there for the entire song or at least when it's there it just doesn't feel as punchy because you have all the moving parts around it whether it's the vocals the synths or the bass on its own you really feel it and that's very interesting yeah whoa i zoinked out during that i am so sorry i'm sorry if you were expecting me to talk during like like first minute and a half two minutes because i was not i was not here i was lost in the music Okay. Seasonal love. Is this Seasonal Love a song from the musical Rent? I will say this, the choices and the uses that this entire album has had of its bass and keyboard slash synthesizer parts, exquisite. It's so good. Kick up the vocals one time. Oh, it's, it's got traces of disco. The string hits very disco esque. Where's the beat? There it is. Yeah, it's 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 that funk disco era type music. Nice pause, nice pause. Yeah, that really clean, almost palm-given electric guitar with the disco string hits. Yeah, that's very nice. That's very nice. No hidden tricks on that transition into the final chorus, just straight in, straight out. I know we still have, I think we have one more song left, don't we? Yeah, we have one more song left and I'm already sold. How? This album has gone four for four on B-sides, four very different genres, and four exquisitely executed songs. This is unbelievable. Oh my. Oh. And the thing is, I, I figured I was going to enjoy this Yonghua solo project, 
just purely off of you know the vibes I got from him on Image and Service, his vocals that I got from him on Image and Service. And so far that has been the case. But this album is oh it's I feel targeted. Like this album so far has so many of the things I love about the specific genres of music that I like listening to that it almost feels like an album that was tailored specifically for me. And that's a really weird feeling because I feel seen. Like the disco era strings, it's got the funk guitar going back, it's got city pop, retro si- like, pretty much, if the last song is a really smooth, acoustic-only ballad, maybe with, like, a string section that comes in, it's pretty much covered every single genre of music that I love and adore. And I have never come across that on an album that I've covered before, ever. Oh. That's great. And I like the vibes that this album has. It's... It hasn't really gone ever, like, too slow or too dark, too sappy. It's been, like, up, it, there's been some ups and downs. Like, there's been some slower songs, there's been some more vibe-year songs, but it's never gone, you know, zoom, all the way into ballad territory yet. And still, feels really fresh. Like, song after song, the energy levels are different. But it's never the same, so once you get maybe a little bit of a slower song, you get a little bit more energetic, then you take it back down a little bit, that is smart album structuring but we have one last song typically last song is a ballad and if you know anything about me you know i love a sappy ballad so start to teeter out of ballad territory, but it's still 85% in there. This one is a bit, yeah, it's a little bit shorter. So it's almost like, uh, it's like an extended outro rather than a proper final song, which honestly, I thought I would be upset at. Nah, nah. And, you know, at the fact that this was very much like an 85% ballad in a way, yeah, I have never come across an album that is so targeted towards me and my musical interests. Oh, oh my goodness. That is an experience I was not expecting to go through today. Am I mad at it? God. Oh, I love that. Oh, that was so pretty. 
Um, here's the thing that caught me off guard about Note to Self is how modern it was. Like, the entire album, sure, there was some modern, like, mixing styles and things like that, but very much covered various genres of music from the past. But Note to Self very much took a spin, like, you know, post-2010s pop ballad type of vibe. And I think that's really interesting. A really almost fresh way to finish the album, if that makes sense. Yeah, but ending it on a ballad? Oh, yeah. And ending it on a ballad that's mixed in a way where it's his vocals that take the main, I think is very smart. He has a very pretty vocal range and a very pretty vocal style on a really soft ballad. He takes all the intensity out and it's just really smooth. Paired with that reverb too. Ooh, the reverb just accentuates that. Oh. Okay. Okay. I'm on board. I'm, I'm 100% on board with this. And... I don't really have a great way of articulating this, but Yonghua as a vocalist is so flexible in terms of what type of music he's able to perform that I don't actually know what his preferred style of music is. Like Even through Imogen's service, I couldn't tell what his preferred style of music was. Because, I mean, yes, he's the vocalist in a band, first and foremost, right? And so, like, on uh, Imogen's service, he did, you know, the Seraphim's No Celestial. And that was really good. Also did, like, Heike's Rose Blossom. That was also really good. And throughout this album, too, it's like, you get so many different, like, specific genres of music, so to speak. And it all sounds like his primary genre of music. And I don't know how he does that. Is to be this flexible when it comes to music takes a lot of talent. And I think that's very much an indicator of just how talented Yonghua is as a vocalist and as a performer. Man. Like, where do I even start trying to pick a freaking B-side of the album? Because legitimately, this album went, uh, you know, including the title track, 6 for 6. This album, in fact, I'm going to pull it up uh, while we're waiting here. Uh, where is it? Uh, solo Album of the Year. It's going to rank very highly at the end of the year. That's how much I enjoyed it. And this is, like, that is from someone who's never listened to CM Blue and Jung Young Hwa's music before. This is going to rank very highly at the end of the year for Solo's Album of the Year. It's that good. I enjoyed it that much. Dang. I've been missing out, eh? Oh my goodness. But, oh, I gotta wrap this up before I ramble on for eternity. But that is it for me today. Thank you all for listening along with me. Hopefully you enjoyed it as much as I did because, who knows, I enjoyed it very much. But one last request from me today. Let us work together as a community to bring a little bit of extra happiness back into the world. Whether it be, you know, checking with your friends and family, holding the door open for somebody, or even picking up a piece of trash off the street. Just one small act of kindness to may brighten up someone else's day today. Know that wherever you are in the world, should you ever be going through a tough time in your life, for whatever reason it may be, even though I'm just some guy on the internet who waffles about music in his free time, know that I will always be a friend, an ally, and a shoulder to lean on whenever you need me. So take care of yourselves, take care of each other, spread the love, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.